Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. Well, it's another stinker of a day here in Perth. We've got 40 degrees again today, so I did manage to get a bit more done out on the sh new shop build. Um, but then about lunchtime, you just couldn't touch anything. I put a heat gun on the steel, and it was over 70 degrees, the steel. You know, so you just go start early in the morning. You know, I start out there probably 4 o'clock, half past 4 in the morning, just and uh, go as far as I can. So. So what I've done, I've dug out this old, I started making a video some time ago. Now, this is an angle plate build, so we're building some nice big angle plates for the, for the machines, for the milling machine and such. So, yeah, I filmed it quite a, quite a while ago, and I thought I'd just get it to the stage where it's ready for machining, and then I'll do a part two of it. But, so this is the part one, and I don't know when I'm going to do the part two, because... I was just going to machine it in the bridge port, and I thought, no, I'll wait, and I'll do it. Let's machine it in the um, big Russian mill, and then when the new shop's up and running, which is a long time away yet. But in the interim, because I brought the shaper, and I thought I'd like to see a shaper finish. Uh, the tool marks, the, the the lines, the parallel lines of a shaper finish on these angle plates. So I think that's the way we're going to go with them. So we put them in a fire. We had a I had a big fire going for. I think I lit it in the morning and it went out the next morning <laughs> and I left the parts just in there for a couple of days just to cool off. I had a, a massive amount of wood that I had to burn because it was all infested with termites. So yeah, we had a, a bit of a bonfire and a bit of a party. So, um, so the aim of that was to normalise it, stress relieve, whatever you want to call it. Um, I thought I'll throw them in. It's not going to do them any harm whatsoever. So if I didn't do it, I'd regret it. So we'll swing it down. And I did lose because it was a while ago. I've lost the footage of pulling it out of the fire. So we'll swing it down. We'll have a look, and this is what they look like now. These steel plates. I've got a few of them to do now. It's for my um, angle plate build. So what we're doing is we're just putting a 30 degree uh, weld prep down them and we'll see how they butt together and we might have to, due to the thickness of the plate, we might have to do a U-joint. So what that'll be, instead of a straight weld prep, it'll come in a U-shape. So that way when, you, when it's welded, you're not using as much weld to hold the plates together and it still has the same strength. So we'll take a cut down and we'll see how we're looking. So these will be welded together, probably we'll use the um, LN25, the big wire feeder with some big uh, inner shield wire in it. So we have our high tech chip control apparatus in place so the old t-shirt there on a stick keeps all the chips in check stops them going into the shelves and whatnot so we're just tootling along at a, at a gentle pace on these ones there's no great hurry so anyway we'll continue on So this will be our weld joint there, so this will all get machined flush after welding, so it gives um, all this area here to be filled in with weld. And we'll probably just do a, um, a run along the rear as well.
So it's time to weld up these angle plates. So what the plan is, we'll do um, a decent route pass through the centre there with the MIG. Then we'll switch over to the big wire feeder. So with this, we don't have our part tacked up at right angles. So if we put a square on, we're hard up here. You can see we've got about a three-eighths of an inch gap down that end there. So what we'll do that, to square that up, we'll control that when we're putting the weld in. So that's our root pass. So from now on with this one, we'll switch over to the big wire and fill that in. So that's our root pass. So from now on with this one we'll switch over to the big wire and fill that in.
So that's the first run with the inner shield. So we're running this uh, 2.4 millimeter wire. And, uh, it does a nice job. It gets a bit more difficult once you start getting up towards the top. It's very easy to lose your way. <laughs> This is the uh, link and wire feeder we're using. The wire. So, because it's a um, flux core wire, we don't. We're not running any gas with it. Just squeeze the trigger and go for it. There you, you pull, you weld in that direction there. Not like a Meg where you weld in that direction there. But with this size wire you can only go flat welds. I can only go flat welds anyway. That's our Lincoln welder, quite a powerful bit of gear that. Zyphat's fucking rooted. So we've got three passes in that now. So what we do now, put our square back on it and see how we're travelling. It's just starting to come up pretty square now. It's got a bit of a gap under this end. So what that means, we've got to start welding on the other side. So we'll flip it over. So what we're going to do now is put up maybe one or two or three big fillets along here and this will bring it back the other way and this is how we control the angle, make sure we keep it square. So we just cranked up the great Australian heat treatment oven, so we'll be normalising, stress relieving some parts in here. We'll bring you back later on the video. Now these are the two main culprits for stress relieving. Now there's a lot of welding that we did on here and because we used correct welding procedures with the part unbraced we managed to keep them dead 90 degrees so the way you do that when you when we were doing the um, large fillet down the side we keep a square on it all the time we'll keep checking it when we see it starting to pull then we start laying beads on the other side to bring it round straight again So these are due to go in and we'll get them normalised. I had to, running the big wire makes it really, you can't do a neat finish weld. So I've had to fill in the ends with the ordinary MIG with a 1.2 wire just to build that back up to, to a square corner. So we'll get these heat treated, probably for a bit, oh, probably 16 hours, and then into the milling machine they go.
So we threw a few old pins in there as well just to see how they go. So now we'll keep the fire built up and hope for the best. Well our parts are still cooking away in there, they've been in there for three hours. So probably another 12 hours to go, 15, 12, 15 hours to go. And also, while I've still got your attention, we had a couple of stickers turn up in the, in the mail there from Paul over in England, the Nackler's Workshop. So you might want to pop over and check out Paul from the Nackler's Workshop. So these will go up on the board up yonder there with the other stickers. So I also had another, this cap turned up in the mail. Nice cap too, fits just right. Uh, Mac Trucks, and I think that was uh, organised by Everett over in Canada, so thanks Everett, and I'll we'll keep this one as me going out hat, rather than get it all grubbied up in the workshop. So anyway, over to our angle blocks, or angle plates, sorry. Okay, so these are how they are fresh out of the fire, and of course this one here, we're going to cut this one in half once it's machined and we'll make two out of this one. And these are the larger ones, so size, approximate size wise, uh, 210 wide, or for our Northern Hemisphere Americans, eight and a half inches, thereabouts, wide. Uh, what have we got here? Nine and a half inches. Yeah, 245 mil by 180 mil thereabouts 7 inches so these are our 32 mil plate which is inch and a, it's, it's, uh, just under inch and a quarter so um, I think they'll machine up quite nicely but as we said we'll cut this one in half and make two and these will be two good sized angle plates for our big milling machine and also the bridge port yeah, so I can't wait to get those in the, in the shaper when we get that fired up and running and uh, knock them into some form of angle plate. So, yeah, as I said before, this is just a bit of an old video that I had. I mean, it's my fault I've lost the films or the photos of it coming out of the fire. That's just my piss poor computer skills and bad media management. Uh, we can maybe improve on that in the new year. So, anyway, take it easy, take care, and... Um, I still haven't forgotten about the tool and cutter videos. That was the plan on these hot days to do that, but I've just pushed ahead with the um, shock build. So anyway, take care, take it easy. Have a great new year. Don't get too pissed. See ya.